Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with homemade cheese curds. That's right, making your own cheese curds at home is not fast or easy. The one thing that makes it seem even more difficult is knowing that you could just walk down the street a couple blocks and buy an entire package for just a few dollars. But I realized for many of you potential poutine makers, that is not an option. So I thought I would take one for the team and actually show you how to do this yourself. And first up, we're going to transfer a gallon of whole milk into a sterilized pot. And we'll go over that along with all the other exotic ingredients in the blog post. But anyway, we're going to transfer our milk into one pot and then place that over another pot that has a few inches of water in it, creating what we call in the business a bay marie, also known as a double boiler. And what we'll want to do is slowly bring that up to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, giving it a stir once in a while, at which point we're going to add two of our remaining three ingredients. The first of which would be some calcium chloride, which we have to dissolve in water first. So if yours comes in crystals like mine did, we'll have to crush those against the bottom and keep stirring until it's totally dissolved. And then what we'll do once that is completely dissolved, and we have our milk at exactly 90 degrees, is we'll go ahead and stir that in, and stir it for about one minute. And then once that's been stirred in, we'll go ahead and sprinkle over our mesophilic culture which very long story short is the bacteria that turns milk into cheese. And what we'll do is sprinkle that over and let it sit on the surface for exactly one minute, at which point we'll stir it in for exactly one minute. And I don't think it really matters, but the cheesemakers really want you to use sort of an up and down stirring motion, although I forget why. But as long as we stir that gently and thoroughly for exactly one minute, we should be good. And then what we're going to do is cover this and let that culture do its thing for 35 minutes. And basically what we're doing here is giving those microorganisms enough time to get down and reproduce before we add the last major ingredient, the rennet, which we're going to want to dilute in a little bit of water. And while it's our culture that turns the milk into cheese, it's the rennet that's going to make this mixture coagulate to form the curds. So what we'll do once our timer rings is go ahead and stir this in and continue stirring for exactly one minute, at which point we're going to cover that back up and set our timer for 45 minutes or until we achieve what's called a clean break. Which means if we tear or cut the curd, it separates cleanly with the break filling with clear whey. Which is exactly what you can see happened around that thermometer. But the official test is done with a knife. And if you are at the clean break stage, that knife's going to cut right through very cleanly, sort of like you're going through gelatin. Oh, and I should mention, after 45 minutes, if you're not at the clean break stage, just keep it at 90 degrees until you are. And if your curd is cutting as nice as mine, we'll go ahead and slice this into cubes. And I usually shoot for something about three quarters of an inch square. But I'd say anywhere between a half inch and an inch is going to be fine. But anyway, we'll cut down cubes by slicing one way, and then turning the knife and cutting across the other. And then I actually like to do a third cut, where we hold the knife at a 45 degree angle and slice it once more like that. Which is a little awkward, especially when you get to the end. But as you'll see, when we cook and stir this stuff, it's not really going to matter because we're going to break up any large curds with a spoon. And then once that's sliced, we'll let it sit for exactly five minutes. And if you are to the clean break stage, you should see a bunch of whey starting to come out and those little cubes of curd will start to shrink and separate. Check it out. Few things look as cool as freshly cut curds. And then what we're going to do is raise the temperature of this mixture to 98 degrees and cook it for about 90 minutes or so stirring approximately every 10 minutes. So yes, don't make any plans for the next hour and a half. We're going to keep it as close to 98 degrees as possible, covered when we're not stirring. And like I said, every 10 minutes or so, we'll take off the lid and give it a stir for about a half a minute. And during that aforementioned stirring, if you see any curds that look a little too big, just take the edge of your spoon and break them down to a little smaller size. And what you're going to notice as time passes, as those curds will release more and more whey and get smaller and smaller. And the longer you cook them, the smaller they'll get and the firmer your finished curds and or cheese will be. So I ended up cooking mine for just over 90 minutes, at which point they looked a little something like this. And one thing you can look for to tell you you've gone far enough is that if you kind of gently squeeze the curds together, they want to stick to each other, which as you're just about to see is a very important attribute. So what we're going to do after we think our curds have cooked long enough is transfer those into a cheesecloth lined strainer that's set over another pot. Because what we'll do once all those are transferred in is pour some of that whey through the curds into the pot below, 
Enough so you have like about three inches, but you do not want it touching the curds. And what we'll do is let that drain for a minute or two. And then we're going to go ahead and wrap it up and cover it. And we're going to adjust our temperature to try to keep those cheese curds about somewhere between 112 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're going to let those sit and drain just like that for 10 minutes. At which point we're going to go ahead and unwrap it. And hopefully if everything's gone according to plan, all those little curds have kind of stuck together to form a slab. And I'm very happy to report that's exactly what happened in my case. And then what we're going to do at this point is take a knife or a bench scraper and go ahead and cut this in half right down the middle. And we'll flip one side over the other to sort of stack them up. At which point we're going to rewrap it and give it a little press. And then we'll recover and let it sit for 10 minutes more. And again, we're maintaining a temperature somewhere between 112 and 115. And I should probably mention, if you have a sous vide setup, maintaining these precise temperatures is way, way easier. But I don't, and it's still totally worked out. But anyway, we'll leave our stack slab sitting for 10 minutes. And then what we'll do after 10 minutes is uncover it and flip it over. And yes, let this drain another 10 minutes. Which is definitely going to be just as exciting as the first 10 minutes. But then, some good news. We actually get to do something a little different. We'll go ahead and temporarily remove that from the heat. And then somehow, some way, we'll cut this big slab into smaller slabs, which we will then stack and continue to drain over our warm colander. And by the way, this is way easier if you use a square pan, since working with a half moon shape can be a little bit geometrically challenging. So what I ended up doing is kind of squaring it off by cutting off both ends and stacking those. And then with that sort of squarish piece left over, I cut that into four pieces. Although, as you'll see, not very evenly. Okay, that was not my most precise work ever. But I think, as you'll see, it really doesn't matter that much, as long as we can kind of stack and press that all together. And it's probably worth mentioning that the shortcut method here is to not do this at all. Okay, some people just take that slab of curd we started with, and just simply press that with something heavy, and let it drain like that, with the weight sort of pressing out the extra way. But anyway, I thought I would use a semi-proper technique, with emphasis on the semi, and then what we'll do once that's returned to our 112 to 115 degree environment is cover that and let it sit for 15 minutes before uncovering, unwrapping, and flipping slash rearranging. All right, theoretically, you're just not supposed to flip everything over, but you're also supposed to rearrange the positions, which apparently has something to do with keeping the heat nice and evenly distributed. And basically by letting this stuff drain stack like this, we're creating a little extra weight and a little extra pressure, and apparently our curds will come out a little better but anyway, bottom line, we're going to keep them in this warm colander, flipping them over and or rearranging them every 15 minutes. And we're going to want to do that at least three more times. Although I think I did mine four. I kind of lost count. But anyway, what we'll do once we've completed that operation three or four more times is remove that from the heat and unwrap it. And I like to transfer those slabs onto a paper towel line plate. And we'll separate those pieces and let them drain for a few minutes. And as you can see, those have shrunken up pretty good. Or is it shrunked up? Or have shrunked up? I don't know. Add that to the things in this video I'm not quite sure of. And then what we'll do after those sit on the paper towel for a few minutes is go ahead and cut these into cubes. And of course you pick any size you want. I'm showing you right here how big I like mine. But you decide. I mean you are after all the little Miss Muffet. Of what size to cut it? And then what we'll do once those are all cut is transfer them into a plastic bag where they must be salted. Otherwise, they're going to taste really bad. And by bad, I mean they'll taste like almost nothing. So we'll go ahead and sprinkle our salt in and give it the old shake a shake -a. And I like to do this in two additions. So you just saw the first half. And then we'll open this up and pour the rest in. And we'll continue to toss those around until that salt's all absorbed. At which point, we'll go ahead and transfer those to a plate. And yes, we'll finally sneak a taste. Which above and beyond having a beautiful, fresh, milky flavor featuring a very subtle tanginess. These also have that very interesting texture of something that's slightly firm and rubbery that kind of sort of squeaks against your teeth, at least when they're really fresh. So I really did enjoy that and found it comparable to the ones down the street I could have walked and got in 10 minutes and been done. And if you want, you can enjoy these as soon as that salt gets absorbed in, but I much prefer to age mine overnight by covering them in cheesecloth and letting them sit out for about 12 hours. And that very, very slight tangy flavor is going to get concentrated even a little more. But anyway, the next day mine looked like this. And the texture was just about the same. But like I say, I think the taste improves just a little more. Which, by the way, reminds me of a very, very mild Monterey Jack. But anyway, that's it. Homemade cheese curds. 
We'll go ahead and transfer those into some kind of airtight container. And those will keep in the fridge for at least a week. And then as far as enjoying these, besides eating them as is, you can also coat them with a little bit of cornstarch and deep fry them to create fried cheese curds, which today I'll be pairing with some cayenne spike ketchup. And that, my friends, is one of the great fair foods of all time. It's right up there with funnel cakes. And if I'm not mistaken, the ancestor of the modern day mozzarella stick. Or at least that's the story I'm going with. And of course, if you don't want to eat them as is or fried, you could always settle for using them in a poutine, which you only get to see for a couple seconds because that's coming up soon. But anyway, I really do hope you give that a try after you give these homemade cheese curds a try very, very soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.